Hello everyone, this is the day that the Lord has made. I believe this is going to be a blessing, a huge blessing to you today. If you're listening to me today, I need you to know that God's calling over your life is not ordinary. What God has called you to do is extraordinary. That's why your challenges will be extraordinary. What you're going to have to overcome will be extraordinary because this calling is extraordinary. Nothing that God ever does is ordinary. He is an extraordinary God. And whatever is born of God overcomes the world. So if our God is extraordinary, whatever is born of God has got to be extraordinary. The mountains you're going to have to climb will be extraordinary. What the things you would be, you would overcome will be extraordinary. Your pain may be extraordinary, but the gain is also extraordinary. God has called you to be light, to show forth his light because he is light. And he has called you exactly to do the same, to show forth his light to the dark world that we live in. As the scriptures say, you are the light of the world. Jesus teaching in Matthew 5 says, you are the light of the world. He says, therefore, let your light so shine that men may see you and glorify your father in heaven. Now, who does he say is the light of the world? You. You. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 60, the prophet Isaiah said, Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen up on you. In order to be the light that you are, that God has made you, it's so important for you to understand what light is. Very important to understand what light is. Because understanding light is understanding who you are. Yeah. Basically, if you don't understand what light is, then you don't understand who you are. You are the light of the world. I pray that this makes a new meaning to you, that you are the light of the world. Maybe it's important to ask the question, is light, in the context of the word of God, is light a thing or is light a person? Because Jesus said, you are the light. Hmm. In order to tie this together, we must first understand who we are. And the context of who God is. Because we are made in his image. And after his likeness. And the scriptures make us understand in James 1.17. That... God is the father of light in whom there is no variableness or shadow of turning. God is light. Therefore, light is not something God has. Light is something God is. Let's dive a little more into this. We must understand that light and darkness in the context of the word of God equals good and evil. James 1, 17 to 18 says, Every good, and I read, Every good and perfect gifts come from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. He chose to give birth through the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruits of all he created. God is light and he lives in us. Let that sink in for a moment. Let that sink in for a moment. God is light and he lives in you. God is light and he lives in me. Light and darkness are spirits. They are forces. They are not tangible. What we see is their, their effect. So let's put it like this. Light and darkness are the driving forces 
behind our thoughts and our actions and our words. They are driving forces. So, so light is spiritual and darkness is spiritual. They're spiritual forces. So understanding this has got to play a part in the knowledge, in how we classify, in how we understand good and evil. So then what is good? What is evil? Philippians 4, 8 gives us some insight into this. It says, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Think on these things. So if Jesus says you are the light of the world, and if Light and darkness equals good and evil. What Jesus is practically letting you know, letting you and I know, is that you ought to be the good amidst the bad. That you ought to be the good in the midst of the bad. The light in the midst of darkness. The good among the bad. We live in a dark world that needs no for the same that's operating. God wants us to be the good thing living among the bad things that won't let the bad things change who we are. So my challenge to you is you are the light. Be the light. Isaiah said, darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness the people. But it says your light shall arise. There's a contrast between light and darkness, and they never mix. When light shows up, darkness automatically disappears. If darkness is still in the room, it, autom it automatically means light just hadn't showed up yet. Light just hasn't showed up yet. Because darkness is just the absence of light. You are the light of the world, says the word of God. You are light, so be the light, even if no one else would. Be willing to be different. Be willing to be lonely. <laughs> be willing to stand out, <laughs> which means you must be willing to be talked about. It comes with being the light. Be willing to be targeted. Be willing to be criticized. Be willing to walk alone. It comes with being the light. Be, be willing to be a trailblazer. The one who paves the way that others follow. Because you are the light. Do you know what it means to be the light? That means you are a trailblazer. You are the one to break into new territories and take new territories and open the way to some uncharted territories because you are the light is the calling of being the light to break new grounds being the first in your family to do something being the first in your community to do something being the first within your group of friends to do something it comes with being the light Oh, yeah, you have no idea what God has anointed you with. You have no idea what God has put inside of you that you are so shy to bring out. You have no idea what God has deposited inside of you that you are too shy to reveal because you don't want to be talked about, because you don't want to be criticized, because you don't want people to see you any different, because you're trying so hard to blend in and to be accepted in a, in a group. You are the light. You are the light. You are the light. Jesus said it. You are the light of the world. Be willing to break new grounds. Be willing to be the first one to step into uncharted territories. You are the light. What do lights do? Lights pave the way. What do lights do? Lights show us where to go. What do lights do? Lights reveal. 
Lights reveal what is concealed. What do lights do? Light show us what has always been there that we just didn't see. If I come into this room right now and it's dark, walking into a room at the basement of a, a building looking for something before, and it was totally dark, and I could not even find anything. Don't get me wrong. I, I, Look, I thought I knew this room. I knew where everything was. But after making one or two attempts to find something that I thought that I thought I knew where they were and couldn't find them, I realized that I needed to light up the room. Now my challenge is finding the wall switch. And then I begin to put my my hands all around the wall because I know if I can find the switch and flip it, I would find what I'm looking for. Perhaps you're the switch that needs to be flipped. <laughs> For the world to see something that they couldn't see before. Perhaps there is a switch that needs to be flipped. You are the light of the world. Perhaps you are the switch that needs to be flipped for the world to see something new. And you haven't flipped the switch yet because you're afraid. Because you're holding back. What are, gonna, what are they going to say about me? What are they going to think about me? Flip that switch. You are the light of the world. Let me tell you something. In the area that God has called you and whatever God has called you to do, you are the light in that area. And until you flip that switch, you will not let people see what God wants them to see through you. This is awesome. Maybe there are things we can see yet because you haven't flipped on your switch. And the people that God has called you to are in darkness because you didn't turn on the switch. So I walk around the room and I eventually find, put my hand all around the wall looking for the switch. And eventually I find it and I turn on the switch and light comes on. Now I can see everything that I couldn't see. Now note that those things were always there. I was just the one who couldn't see them. They were just in their original position unmoved. The only thing between me and picking up the items was the light. I put it to you, child of God. There's a big possibility that you're, you're standing in between. You're in the way of something because you wouldn't turn on your light. <laughs> that you're standing between the people and what God wants them to see because you aren't turning on your light. Remember what Jesus says. He says, let, please Take note of the word. He said, let, let your light so shine. If he says, let your, your light so shine, it means you have the power to let it or not let it. Maybe it's not God holding you back. Maybe it's you holding the light back that God put inside of you. No, Jesus said it. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Wow. So when, when, the, when the light is lit, it gives light to all that are in the house. You don't know who your light can affect. You have no idea how many people your light can touch if you will let it shine. That is so incredible. You have no idea the impact that a testimony you share can affect someone's life, can inspire somebody sharing your pain, what you went through and how God brought you through it. Can change someone's life, can inspire somebody, can give somebody hope. You have no idea the glory that your story has inside of it if you would share it. Jesus said it again. Who lights a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, so that he giveth light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine. Let it shine. Stop holding back the light. Because we need it. You rob God of the glory that he deserves when you don't let your light shine. As you work on that job, let it shine. As you step in that classroom, let it shine. In your neighborhood, let it shine. Stand for the truth. 
stand up for what's right. Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, whatsoever things are praiseworthy, if there be any virtue, think on these things. Let me just close by saying this. Being light or darkness all bothers on what you stand for, what you represent, wherever you are. What are you representing? Are you representing light or are you representing darkness? Who are you as a whole? What do you stand for? Authentic or counterfeit? Light or darkness? Right or wrong? Truth or lie? Justice or inequality? What do you stand for? In the motives of your heart, are you inspired by good or evil? Light or or darkness or do you even ask yourself sometimes the honest question this thing that i'm about to do what does it inspire you know he is the light and we are the reflectors of his light i looked it up what do reflectors do and it's right here i wrote it down reflectors bounce light off of their surface redirecting it in a specific direction they are commonly used to increase the brightness or focus or light in a particular area. So God is the light living in us and we are the reflectors of this light. So what are you reflecting? Are you reflecting the light? He, work, he lives in us, flowing through us, working through us. And my question is this, are you transparent enough for this light to flow and shine through you? Are you transparent enough for this light that you carry on the inside of you? If he's the light and he lives in us, but we're not transparent, how can the world see his light in us or through us? Because light that's covered, that's hidden, cannot be seen. Light that is concealed by a non-transparent material profits nothing. So transparency is one of the characteristics of light. Don't tell me you're light and you're not transparent. Even when you do good things, do you do good with an evil motive? Do you do good with an evil motive or you do good with a good motive? Or do you even do any good at all? Or you just do evil and you call it good? Because there are people who do evil and call it good. Your kindness is nothing when your motive is not right. A good thing done with bad intention is a bad thing. When you do a good thing with a bad intention, then it's a bad thing. Are you in touch with your motives? No matter what. Consciously or unconsciously, you are representing light or darkness, good or evil, with everything you say, think, or do. Matthew 5, 16 again says, Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for today. I thank you for what you've done ministering, teaching us, showing us your lights today. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. Lord, let them have the boldness, the spirit of boldness and confidence to stand up for what's right, to be the light that you've called them to be, to be your true representatives, to be your true ambassadors, to stand and represent you and be reflectors of your light that is in them. Help us to flip that switch, to stand up and walk with you because in you we live, move, and have our being. I ask for grace to do that which is right, to make the right decisions, and to be bold for your spirit lives inside of us. For you have not given us the spirit of fear, but out of love and power and of a sound mind. We receive that, walk in it, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Blessed be your name.
in Jesus' name. God bless you.